Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Crafty Concepts with Erin. I'm Erin and I have a double page scrapbook layout for you today featuring the new Hope and Kindness collection from Close to My Heart. If you caught my catalog walkthrough earlier in the month, you probably caught on how excited I was for this collection, but it's all the way in the back of the May and June 2022 catalog. This is a special. It'll be available through the month of June, but it's a larger paper pack. There's 12 sheets to each and they're double sided. And then there's this really beautiful coordinating cardstock that has like a visual texture to it. Die cuts, a sticker sheet, this gorgeous stamp set, which I will be using today. And then then there are also these doilies. Super excited about these. I've already been using them quite a bit on several projects. So there's a larger doily that's about five and three quarters and the smaller one that I think is uh, two and uh, three quarters, but they do nest as well. You could put this inside for different looks, but love these. Super excited to be working with these today. We'll go through this really quick and then we'll jump into the process of today's layout. So I already have each paper flipped over. This is my favorite. I love it. Both of these sides uh, or both sides of this paper are absolutely gorgeous. I love florals and I'm thinking about getting a second pack and just fussy cutting a lot of those. Oh, so pretty. So that's the first set. And then we have this one here. And what's really nice about these patterns is that they're smaller. So they're very well suited for scrapbooking and card making with the smaller scale pattern there. So these nice little white flowers and then these leaves classic stripe on the other side is this paper and what I love about this is you can just use these individual strips or you know maybe cut it down this way and already have this uh, border of strips going down so many fun things you could do there this gorgeous yellow shade and then the opposite side is this one they're very subtle patterns which is nice to mix in with some of the busier patterns uh, bold big florals like this you know you mix and match with the smaller more sub subtle print and it just really works well together we have this fun polka dot and on the opposite side are these four by six cut aparts and I really we haven't had cut aparts for a while but these are fun to use so if you don't want these you know you have the solid polka dot sheet on the opposite side and there's actually two different sheets of cut aparts so we have this gorgeous pine color with the subtle uh, kind of diamond pattern on there and the other side is this cut apart with some different sizes so we have some three by fours four by six some great title options these cute little banner elements and then some two by two squares so lots of variety in these cut aparts since I'm creating a double page layout, I'm going to bring in both of my verse mats and build these together as one large layout. I'm going to have a sheet of white daisy paper, although you won't really see much of this. I'm going to be, you know, preserving some of my pattern paper, so I'm just going to have this for my base. And I have several photos here of my son's girlfriend, Desiree, and these are really fun photos and I'm excited to document them today. So this is a four by six. This one here is a five by four. And then these are just shy of three by four because I wanted to preserve the actual ratio of the original photos. So I am thinking about a layout like this and I did pre-design this layout in Cricut Design Space so I know right where I'm going with it. I also want to show you this gorgeous coordinating cardstock. So this is a little bit different from the traditional cardstock because it has a visual texture to it. First of all, look at that page. It's just awesome. It's the, you know, rich toffee color with just this white paint ready to go. And how fun and easy would that be to build a layout right on top of that? And if you don't like that, the other side is solid. And if I hold it up here at an angle, you can see that visual texture, but it's not physical texture. So you can still stamp on this it's still a smooth finish this set is these you know toffee with the painted white stripes and the other side is solid and then we have peach harbor pine and sage and these have different finishes on each side so one side is this texture and the other side has this kind of like painted brush stroke type texture so really pretty and they coordinate beautifully so I'm going to set my photos out of the way for just a moment while we build up our paper layers. So I have that sage cardstock and I chose the brush side. These are 12 by four and a quarter. You only need to have four inches, but I like to overlap my layers a little bit. So I cut myself just a little bit extra. 
So now I have cut this beautiful floral pattern paper to eight inches. So all of these are eight inches wide by one and a half inches tall. So we're going to create this kind of faux border, making it look like one continuous piece, which you'll see here in just a moment. And then finally, we have two layers of white daisy, which are 10 inches wide by nine and a quarter. That gives us just a slight bit of overlap on that pattern paper for a smooth transition. Now, if you don't like rounded corners, you can skip this step, but I have a We Are Memory Keepers corner rounder here, and I find it much easier to just flip it over and look through the back side, and then I'm just doing the two outer corners. So we'll get this one, and it's just gonna give it a little bit different look. Polish those edges just a little bit. Not everybody likes rounded corners, and that's fine. You do you. And we'll get this one here and place that just like so. And then two of these pattern paper, this is the Desert Rose and the opposite side is that really pretty uh, canary yellow. So we're going to place those right about there, I think. And this is just going to anchor our photos. I'm just going to add some of the Desert Rose ink to the top side only of this piece because I do plan on bringing in one of the zip strips for one more little layer. So I'm just inking up the top because the bottom won't show. And I love this tone on tone look. Typically I use black, but in this case I thought Desert Rose would be a softer look on this paper and I'll do the other side off camera. So I went ahead and matted all my photos on Harbor cardstock and I did distress the edges of those. I don't know if you can see that or not and for this side I cut one large harbor photo mat that will accommodate both photos and I'll explain why I did that a little bit later when we start to embellish but I'm going to go ahead and get these adhered down just making sure my margins are even and they're a little bit off I think I cut that wider than I need to so I will end up trimming off just a smidgen from the end off camera You'll notice the main focal photo does not have a white border and that was intentional. I just felt it looked better against the Harbor card stock. So I cut off the white border and matted it directly. And then these are zip strips. Those are the branding strip off of the pattern paper. And I just really like the way it finishes off the transition between the desert rose and the white uh, card stock. It just is one little more element of detail just to strengthen that horizontal line and really anchor our layout. So I'm ready to start embellishing. We're going to cut a large doily from peach cardstock. So I have a six inch square piece of cardstock and I am using the lighter side. I like to put a piece of post-it removable tape to hold that in place just in case I need to run it through my die cut machine again. Everybody's machines are different, but for mine, my plates are very well loved. I'm going to add two cardstock shims. I use these over and over and over again, and that is going to give me a really clean cut with one pass through the die cutting machine. Just so you guys can see how well these cut, I'm going to show you here on camera. And so pop, look at that. I mean, it is perfect, like butter. There's just two little spots stuck in there. So I'm just going to push those out with my uh, clean toothbrush there. And then for this, you know, just tap it on your work surface and most of those will fall out. If any of the smaller pieces are stuck, you can just use a clean toothbrush to brush those out and they come out super easy, which is very nice. That's a sign of a good quality die. This is another reason I like working on my Versamat. I can easily pick up my project and move it if I need to clear some room for some stamping or something like that. I'm going to use these doilies to create the framework for my visual triangle. So I have the large one for my main cluster and title area over on the left, and then I cut three smaller ones. I have desert rose, and oh, I don't want to put white up there because it'll just disappear. So a smaller peach one, and then I will place the white one down below the photos here. I will cut off the hidden part and save that for later, but you can see we have the framework for this visual triangle for our embellishment clusters. So I'm gonna work on my title. I have the Hope and Kindness stamp and thin cut set here. 
I'm going to use the word beautiful. Now this does have a coordinating die. So to make sure that it lines up with the die, the easiest thing to do is to just set it on your work surface. So it kind of takes its natural shape and then pick it up with your block. I'm going to stamp this in Harbor ink. So let me just slide that out of the way and then we'll get this nice and inky. Have I told you how much I love the Harbor color? If not, love it, absolutely love it. It's just so beautiful just like the word says here. I'm also going to add this little stamped image. It says, you are, I'm using Desert Rose, and there's several sentiments on the stamp set here. They say, you are with all my and sending you. So you can combine those with the words for some great card ideas too. So I'm gonna get this lined up. I'll run that through my die cutting machine and I actually cut two extra pieces. You're going to want a glue with a fine tip and then just layer it up. And then this is going to allow you to slide that in place and we're gonna stack the die cuts to give them a little bit more presence on the layout. This is, you know, kind of a more intricate piece and it would be difficult to get foam on the back of that, but I definitely want it to have some dimension. I mentioned cards, so hang tight to the very end and I'll share some cards that I created with these papers if you haven't already seen them on my Instagram account. So I'm just repeating this one last time for three combined layers. And like I said, that's just gonna give it some, just more oomph on the page and everybody wants a little oomph, right? Someone out there somewhere is going, what does she mean by oomph? <laughs> So let me go ahead and slide this back into place. Now you'll notice with my photo positioning, I've slid this one up and that is making the perfect little nook for my title. This I stamped in the same color as the background because I didn't really want that component being much of a focal piece. This sticker is from the coordinating sticker sheet and it's going to act as my main, you know, embellishment layer over here. I love that it's one piece. I am going to add a few other elements to it. And then this is also from the sticker sheet. It says compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. This describes my son's girlfriend beautifully. And these are her graduation photos. This one says you are amazing, beautiful, and capable. So with, you know, graduation and moving on to the next chapter, chapter, I thought these were all, you know, really good sentiments to add to these photos and help tell the story behind the pictures. Now, these are the Coordinating Hope and Kindness die cuts. They come on a big 12 by 12 sheet, but I went ahead and popped all of those little shapes out and put them in this tray. Now, there's all sorts of really neat pieces in here, like this says Sweet. That would be a great title. There are little frames that have this beautiful white detailing, hearts, floral clusters, lots of goodness. What I'm looking for are leaves to tuck into my embellishment clusters. I did fussy cut this from the pattern paper. I like to repeat elements in each of my clusters. So you'll notice I have some floral element. They're not all identical, but they still have a flower. We have the doily in each, and then I'm going to include some of these, you know, craft colored die cuts as well. And I also like to tuck things underneath the photos as well as on top of the photos. And I really feel that all works together to create some really nice embellishment clusters. So I have a little heart. So let me pop one over here and I'm not going to put one in the upper uh, spot because like I said, they don't have to match perfectly, but you guys get the general idea. So I'm just kind of digging through that leaf is too big. So let me go with the flower. Maybe now that's not quite right. This one looks good. Perfect. It's very easy to get caught into the trap of overthinking our layouts, you know, just sometimes just go with it. It's it's okay. So this sticker says keep on growing, which again, very appropriate for this stage in life. And now for my journaling, what I'm gonna do is create a little flip pocket here with this banner element. So I have printed that out on cardstock and I'm adhering it to the back of this sticker here. I did remove the adhesive from that, so I'm applying some tape runner. And now I'm going to cut the excess cardstock off to you know, give that a nice clean line so you don't notice it from the front. This flip flap is four by four, and my little element here is like, you know, just shy of four inches by three and a half. So it's too big for a three by four and too small for a four by four. That's a mouthful, but I'm gonna make it work and I'll show you how I do that here in a moment. 
but you can see how that's just going to flip up. So before I do that, hang tight because I'll actually show you how I'm going to adhere that and we still have some cards to look at too. I want to add a little bit of bling to this layout. So I grab my little adhesive backed uh, sparkles. These are clear sparkles and I'm adding those to the clusters, you know, just some in each area. And I like to do things in odd numbers, but you know, not always. I've got four on that left side. And then I'm just creating another triangle around the, each individual cluster. So you can see that adds just a little bit of sparkle and shine, and it just adds another little detail. And then this page, let me hold that up. You can see all the layering going on and how everything just works together. So let's go ahead and adhere the journaling. I do need to slip that into a page protector in order to do that. So I went ahead and do that. Sorry about the shine. Now, typically, I would fold it over so that it's covering the pocket. But since I'm adhering this a little bit differently, my flap is actually going to be the open part because I want to adhere this to the back side of the actual layout itself. Hopefully that makes sense. So these are really super sticky. So you wanna take your time. I'm just kind of getting a good visual here. I'm going to remove that adhesive strip tuck this under, just don't press down until you're 100% committed to the placement. So I'm just gonna line that up with the top of the page protector on the back of the layout, and then that is working well, so I'm gonna give it a good press. Now, I don't want that piece to slide down, so I need to adhere it without it being noticeable. So what I'm gonna do is line that up with the top of my layout, and then I'm going to use a micro glue dot to attach it to the actual flip flap pocket. So I'm gonna do that in the little space in the upper corner on the inside. Now when you open it, you can see the, the um, glue dot. So I'm gonna attach a heart to the outside of the page protector with more glue dots, and that way it'll just blend right in. I love having interactive elements on my layouts. I think they're a lot of fun and interesting to look at. So let's check out those cards. This is one I created in my private customer appreciation group. Now it is from the Hope and Kindness card making workshop. I did tweak it just a little bit, but you can make 16 beautiful card designs and they have the PDF to walk you through that. Now these two were inspired by fellow maker and friend Kelly Baxter Fitzgerald. I love it. She added these little coffee stamps to it and I just had to recreate them. So we have the large doily and the hope and kindness pattern papers. And then this is a stamp called Coffee Helps from the May and June catalog. I'm a major coffee drinker. So look how fun that layout is and how they use those stamp images to create embellishments for that page. I don't need an inspirational quote. I just need coffee. How perfect is that? Life happens, coffee helps. Super fun cards. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you gave it a big thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, you might want to consider tapping that subscribe button. I'll have more inspiration featuring this gorgeous paper pack coming up very soon. For everything I used in today's projects, I'll have it listed in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye!